give the Lord the praise. Father, we give you the praise for this testimony and thanksgiving service. Thank you for confirming that it is actually testimonies and thanksgiving service. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' precious name. Very, very quickly, I'll give a word charge and then we'll quickly go into the dedication of children um, and we'll be through in a few minutes. I welcome everyone. I welcome, and also the prayer for our guests of today, the banking profession. We appreciate you and we know that you will not live here the same in Jesus' name. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19. I want to give a charge. He said, the Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hind feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. To the chief singer on my stringed instrument. He will make me to walk upon my high place to the chief singer on my stringed instrument. The subject today is praising and rising. Praising and rising. want to understand how praising God results in the rise of people in life. Praising and rising. The scriptures made it clear, makes it clear abundantly that praise imparts the power to be raised. So praising God is a secret of rising up in life. I am sure it is with that that someone had said that your attitude determines your altitude. It's not possible to have a bad attitude and gain good altitude in life. It's not possible to have a low attitude and have a high altitude in life. David was a praiser of God in scripture. And the top was his place. The Bible called David a sweet psalmist of Israel. By praise he went to the palace of King Saul. Solomon was a praiser of God in scripture. In fact, he was a writer of songs, songs of Solomon. And the top was his place. So what is it that is in praise that takes people up? Five things quickly. Number one, praise in parts. Supernatural strength and supernatural strength brings supernatural speed and lift. Praise imparts supernatural strength, and supernatural strength brings supernatural speed and lift in life. Habakkuk chapter 3. Verse 18 and 19. Already said. Yet. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy. In the God of my salvation. Verse 19. He said the Lord God. Is my strength. He will make my feet. Like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon my high places. As I praise God. He gives me strength. As he gives me strength, the strength takes me up. The strength takes me up. The difference between the eagle and the vulture is the strength with which they fly. The joy of the Lord, scripture said, shall be your strength. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. So every 
genuine worshiper is a spiritually strong person. Every praiser is a spiritually strong person. And to be depressed is to be deprived. Deprived of strength. Deprived of energy. And deprived of a lift. Am I speaking to somebody here? That is why. Depressed people sleep tired. Wake up in the morning tired. Walk through the day exhausted. That will never be your portion. Praise imparts supernatural strength. And supernatural strength brings supernatural speed and lift. Number two, praise brings divine wisdom. And divine wisdom facilitates human stardom. Praise brings its doorway to divine wisdom. There are many who don't understand that praising God is a way to wisdom. First Kings chapter 4 verse 32. When scripture was making, talking about King Solomon. The Bible said he spake 3,000 proverbs. And his songs were 1,005. A thousand and five songs, then three thousand proverbs. What is the ratio? Approximately one to three. One worship, three wisdom, or wisdom, or wisdom, wisdom, whatever be the plural of wisdom. Wisdom. As the as the songs were flowing, the wisdom was flowing. The wisdom was flowing as the songs were flowing. As the worship was flowing, the wisdom was flowing. Praise is a mental fertilizer. A mentality fertilizer. Show me somebody who knows how to worship God. I will show you somebody who is mentally fertilized. The celebration of God is the doorway to inspiration in life. Do you want inspiration for your mind to be open? You can never have an inspired life with a depressed mind. The other day, I realized that Charles Wesley, the brother of John Wesley, wrote 6,000 songs. Not 600. And I, I, had, I had slowed down that I was, the songs were too much. We had not followed it up. And so on. 6,000 songs. Wow. Then we have to start, start afresh. And it is on the frequency of our worship that inspiration flows. God has given me a few songs. 99% of them came in the depth of worshiping God. Worshiping understanding. Worshiping in the spirit. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Your praise opens you up to wisdom and that wisdom may be wisdom in, in ministry wisdom in the area of your business wisdom in your career, in your profession wisdom in every area that is number two, number three praise releases human potentials and human potentials is vehicle For eminence and prominence in life. Praise releases human potentials. And human potentials. Is vehicle for eminence. In 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 5 to 6. The Bible said. Saul was going to come to the garrison of the Philistines. And when he came there. He was going to see prof prophets 
with psaltery, with tablet, with pipe, with harp. That is, you will see people worshipping and playing with instrument. And while he was among them in that climate of worship, something will come out of him. His prophetic gift, what he carried inside that he never knew will come out of him. In the climate of worship, potentials are released. You don't know what to carry until you become a worshiper of Jehovah. Am I communicating? And that potential will take you, that gift. Proverbs 18, 16. Your praise will release your gift and your gift will bring your lift. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. While you praise and you worship God, your gifts will come out. And when your gifts come out, they will orchestrate your lift to your high places. Before I go to number four, number two, I said praise attracts divine wisdom. Two, brings divine wisdom. And divine wisdom brings stardom. Let me just show you the scripture, Proverbs 8, 15 and 16. Concerning wisdom, the Bible said, By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. So, and then Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 1. He said, A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his countenance shall be changed. So your praise, like we said, number two, brings you wisdom, and your wisdom takes you to stardom. And of course, number three, we had said that praise releases potentials and potentials takes you to eminence and prominence. Then number four, praise brings divine favor. And divine favor brings divine lifting. Praise brings divine favor. Divine favor brings divine lifting. Acts 2 47 and they were praising God and having favor praising God and having favor you cannot praise God and lack favor you cannot be a worshiper of God and lack favor and favor brings lifting we saw that in the life of Esther in Esther chapter 2 verse 15 where the scripture said that when the turn of Esther the daughter of Abiel the uncle of Mordecai who had taken her for his daughter was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. And verse 16, and, the, and then Esther was taken to the king. Once you can praise, you can have favor. And once you can have favor, that favor will take you to the palace it will take you up beloved brothers and sisters i am a victim of unusual favor unusual favor unusual favor but favor that we can't even talk about unusual favor by the climate of worship by the atmosphere of worship somebody say a loud amen somebody say a louder amen Lift your right and say, favor is my portion. Finally, praise brings divine presence. And divine presence, again, brings divine lifting. Anybody who carries God cannot be stranded. Psalm 89 verse 15. He said, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Anybody who knows the joyful sound shall walk in the light. Show me a man or a woman with the sound of joy. I will show you somebody who will walk in the light of God's countenance. And that light of God's countenance will take you to the palace. Genesis chapter 32, sorry, 39 verse 2 and 21. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a prosperous man. You see? And he was in the 
in the, in the house of his master. And then the Lord was with Joseph and gave him, showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Joseph kept on going up. Anywhere Joseph was, he was put in charge. Anywhere he found himself, he was placed in charge because he carried the presence of God. That presence of God put him in charge. In Potiphar's house, he was in charge. In the prison, he was in charge. And of course, over the whole nation, he was in charge because of the presence of God. Whenever you see a real praiser of God, a real worshiper, when you come around him, you feel God. Every time you come around a person who doesn't carry God's presence, you want to run away. There is something about them that drives you. My wife and I were in New Jersey. In America. Somewhere. And a man looked at me. And he said, you are a man of God. I said, why do you say so? He said, it is written all over you. All over it. I can see it all over. We're in London, England. At Wembley area. Young lady, North African, Arabian young lady. Looked at me and said at the reception, she was a receptionist. And she said, whatever you have, I want it. I looked at her, I told the people. I said, who told her about us? They said, all of us are coming here for the first time. We checked in. I thought she had forgotten. I said, what did you say? She said, whatever you have, I want it. We carried our Saturday couch with my wife and her and myself. I said, what did you say? She said, whatever you have, I want it. I said, I have Jesus in my life. I have the presence of God. I have the power of God. I have the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He said, everything you just said, I want it. Whenever. And if you can tell my wife <laughs> and my family, they will tell you that one of the things that God has given me the privilege to do with my life and time is his worship. We were flying one day. For about five hours, I was worshiping in the aircraft. I was just singing, worshiping. The air hostess who was serving was talking to me. I wasn't aware. My wife wanted to tap me to pay attention. The woman said, leave him. Do you remember what she said? Is it that we are enjoying we are enjoying what he is doing. That clive, that space was charged. Charged. Leave him, don't stop him. We are enjoying what he is doing. Worship in tongues, worship in understanding, worship with humming, all manner. When you carry God's presence, there is nowhere you cannot go. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, Father, I receive the grace. I receive the help to be a worshiper. This morning, I have just two counsels and then we shall pray. Number one, refuse to allow your life to be weighed down. By the issues of this life. Refuse to allow your life. Psalm 42 verse 5 said. Why art thou cast down? Oh my soul. Why are you disquieted within me? He said. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him. For the help of his countenance. That statement I made now. Can be very very theoretical. If you don't have a relationship with God. 
Because the things that will weigh you down are plenty. Am I communicating? <laughs> there are plenty. But the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him. For he careth for you. Anything you don't know what to do about is safer in the hands of God. Am I communicating? When you don't have the wisdom, the money, or the ability to handle the matter, hand it over to God. Because anything that weighs you down, slows you down. Whatever weighs you down can tie you down. That is the truth. There are those who should be faster in life. They should be more in the front, more on top. But everything weighs them down. Everything weighs them down. Whatever weighs you down, slows you down, ties you down. Number two. Always find reason to praise God daily. Find reason to praise God daily. No matter the situation of your life, there is something to thank God for. Psalm 103 verse 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There is a benefit from God on a daily basis. Do you mean if somebody hit my car and the car is scattered, I should still praise God? Yes, because it was your car they hit, not your life. Will you be happier if your car was safe and your life was lost? Then who drives the car? What if they sacked me from my work? I still have any reason to praise? Yes! They didn't sack you from life. There were those that were sacked from life. What if I met wicked people? Who at gunpoint took my car and took my everything. God forbid. But there was somebody. They didn't only take the car. They also took his life. They went with the car and his life was lost. Am I communicating? There is always something. To be grateful to God for. Somebody say amen. amen. One day I slept and I didn't. I, I was meant to wake up early in the morning to pray. And I didn't wake up as I should wake up to pray. And I, 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 my schedule at times can be very rigid. I mean, so much to do. And, and I was very angry in the morning. Why did I wake up late? And the Holy Ghost said to me. Your own problem is that. You, you didn't wake up early. There are people who didn't wake up at all. Wow. They didn't wake up at all. And they were not prepared for eternity. They died and went to eternity without waking up at all. Then I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up. And thank you because I didn't report in eternity in hell. Beloved brothers and sisters. Life is worth living. See how you are looking. Sharp. Wonderful. Powerful. There are some of your mates in prison now. Not that they did anything wrong. I'm sure you know that. 
There are those in the in the in the in, the, in, the, in an asylum now. They just ran mad suddenly. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Doesn't matter what happens. If there is life, there is hope. A young man sent me a picture three days ago. You showed me that picture. This young man came here full-blown AIDS. To my notice, by my medical, medical uh, training and everything, if you say do spot diagnosis, there's something we call spot diagnosis. Look at the person. Don't ask him any question. Don't do any investigation. Don't do anything. By looking at him, what do you think he's suffering from? <laughs> so, I mean, so if I, if I look at him, he confirmed. His wife left him. His wife told him, do you know you are HIV positive? He said, how can? He went and did the test. He was positive. And the wife left him. Now, it's possible the wife brought it. He suffered for about eight years. Was it eight years? This young man was weighing about 100 kg. He was a big man. He dropped to his hips 40, 50 something or something. His leg was like a little child. Couldn't carry his weight. I looked at him. I said, I knew him 20 something years, almost 30 years ago from Jaws. I said, what is wrong with you? He said, that is why I'm here. I am diabetic. I am HIV positive. I am this. I am that. I said, no. He dropped his burden on this altar. And Jesus touched him. It didn't take 24 hours. He left that altar straight to the laboratory. He did the first test, negative. Second test, negative. Third test, negative. Confirmation test one, negative. Two, negative. Three, negative. The medical people say, this is not possible. This is not possible. All the symptoms are on him. Laboratory evidence shows that this is it. This is not when it was negative, his leg was still like this. It was still dry. After the test was not showed negative, he was still dry, cathetic. They changed to another hospital, changed to diagnostic centers. When? Negative, negative, negative. Two days ago, he sent his picture. Say, look at me now. I think he should be almost 80 or 90 kg back. Oh, I don't know how many kg. I didn't tell you, but his brother texted me. His wife, brother's wife texted me. Whatever you did to my husband, brother, help my husband. To this. That once you have life, if that man could have, and he was a pastor of a church, everything dried up. He was, maybe, let me just die. But provided he didn't give up, God showed up. Look at your neighbor. Say, if you won't give up, God will show up. If you are alive, everything is under control. Let me tell you, I tell you a funny story. One uh, sister in our church here brought the mother from the village and brought her straight to this service, to the, to the church village real village mother came to church looked at this place looked around and then went out and she'll be going out and coming in and going out and coming in so the daughter asked him what is going on he said i normally go out to confirm that i'm still alive <laughs> that i am on the earth that i, I haven't gone to heaven yet <laughs> <laughs> because you can't see this kind of roof in the village or this setting he said just to be sure that I am still on earth because I know, I know that if I am on earth everything is under control so she would just go out and look at the sky just look around these are trees okay we are still alive <laughs> look 
that your neighbor say, if you will not give up, God will show up. Will you stand up with a shout and say, if you will not give up, God will show up. Normally on a Thanksgiving Sunday like this, after this kind of preaching, then we do another celebration. But we, are, we have already done it in advance. But the balance of it you will do at home. Right? We have very, very quick few things to do within the next 15 minutes. And again, ushers, please, no movement until 15 minutes expire. Alright? And then we shall be done. Lift up your hands everywhere you are and let us appreciate God. Anywhere you are, please maintain your position. Lift your hands and your voice and let's appreciate God for today. Appreciate him for the gift of life. Appreciate him for his message. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. If you are alive, no matter what the situation is, you are better than those who are no longer alive. Lift your hands. Lift your voice. Appreciate him. Honor him. Worship him. Oh, glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Oh, glory, 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 glory to the Lord. Oh, Zana, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 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 blessed be the name All the glory, sing it one more time. All glory, glory, glory to the Lord. All the glory, all the glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah! everywhere you are everywhere you are this morning 